Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the senior taster of whiskey.com. This is my son Ben, the master taster of whiskey.com. And today we are tasting the third in a row of Glen Moray whiskies, which came out lately. Yeah. And uh, I'm very eager to find out how this sherry cask compares to the Chardonnay and Cabernet finishes of Glen Moray. Mm -hmm. Yes, the first thing that we realized is this is actually not, not more expensive than the other ones. <laughs> and we had a little bit of a theory that the sherry cars are a bit more overspeculated. <laughs> and yeah, they're not quite because they are the same <laughs> price as the Cabernet, uh, Cabernet and the Chardonnay. Did I get it right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a French person. <laughs> I'm definitely not a French person. So, so, but we don't know which sherry it is, do we? Uh, no, but I guess it's Oloroso. Yeah, it's always Oloroso. Also, yeah. <laughs> and if it's pigs, then it's really expensive. Because there is a definite shortage in the, uh, in the supplies. I don't think that many people drink the PX. I think there's probably still demand for the Oloroso. But the PX is just whoa. sweet. <laughs> it's just sweet and hefty. You could chew sugar cubes and it would be less <laughs> sweet than, than PX. These uh, potzel shaped uh, bottles, they are wonderful and they're giving this sound of glug glug glug. So here we go. The Moray is a Speyside distillery, which does not lie quite in the Speyside, but very close to, <laughs> as we said in the videos before. Um, it's a not too old one. It's 1897. And, uh, well, it was sold for, for, uh, for um, 10 years, 15 years uh, to a French winemaker. So there's the supply of these wine casks and the sherry casks. Well, they started already some decades ago, but uh, Glen Moray was the first which uh, I know of, which uh, finished their whiskies in uh, white wine casks, in the Chardonnay casks. Yeah, yeah the distillery actually was the first distillery to uh, finish whiskies in wine casks. Not mm -hmm. quite sure if it's Chardonnay or something else, but they were the first with wine casks. Yeah. And this one, well, this is a sherry maturation, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. This is dry fruits, there is cinnamon, there's toffee, dark, full. And I, if it was a blind tasting, I would have said this one is older. This has a wonderful sherry smell on this. Typical, yeah, space side single malt whiskey which lies behind. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's nice. You da do have a lot of dried fruits. You do have the cinnamon touch to it. It really feel, feels like Christmas. But I do also feel something that there is something something juicy in there. Something something fruity that's a bit more than just dried fruits. Some berries, cherries, something like that. I like it. Yeah, it's a younger one. You mm -hmm. have these uh, typical yeast flavors mm -hmm. in it which but it doesn't really feel fruits. young so there's no no uh, youth with pears or apple in yeah, it and no sharpness of the alcohol no because sharpness. it's just 40 percent very round whiskey as well yeah. it feels cr or smells like a bit of a creamy honey touch to it as well which is typical for glenmorey that's their that's their distillery character yeah cheers cheers Mm -hmm. This one shows spiciness in the very first taste, where the other ones were quite weak during the first seconds. This one is immediately on the tongue, immediately there. And now I have this juicy, fruity on the tongue, these mouth filling, the oriental spices. And in the aftertaste, yeah, dark chocolate. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
tastes a little, a little bit darker and a little bit ooh, a little bit stronger than and then the smell the smell would have been with the juicy and the honey and that so just the light whiskey no it's a it's a deep dark whiskey it's a little bit different than the what was the last one the cabernet cabernet and that was that was also pretty hefty and intense but it was uh different yeah. this here is a bit of a mixture between fruity and mm, chocolatey spicy yeah. oaky what I have to say to all those three, they are not too complex. They are balanced very well, but uh, they are lacking these deep uh, variety of spices and flavors. So uh, here you feel that they are not too old. They are very well done. They have this cherry cask influence. They have a very good uh, distillery character, uh, but the very long maturation is missing but there are good news there are some older whiskies from Glenmorey mm -hmm. as well there's a 15 year old on the market there's a 12 year old on the market I think there's as well a port wine matured uh, on the market mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different casts and in the meantime uh, older expressions from Glenmorey on the market where you can uh, have reasonable priced uh, more matured whiskies mm -hmm. I like it. The the thing is with Glenmorey, it's a a very good price for value ratio. Mm -hmm. The price for value ratio is exceptional. There are a few distilleries out there that I can think of that have such a good price to value ratio. Some of them ha have higher prices. Their price to value ratio is good because they have age statement and. But this year, these three non age statements that we just have, they have a, a very good price for the quality you get. Okay, they are non age statement. But they are easy drinking on the side whiskies that are really pleasant and have really nice flavors in them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that was it with our little Glen Moray series. Thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, then subscribe to the channel and see you next time.